Yu-Gi-Oh games don't die, they multiply. And that means there's still room for error. Lots of error. The rules of the original game played all throughout the world should be the only rules that subsequent Yu-Gi-Oh video games should follow, but that's one school of thought that Konami has unfortunately thrown to the wolves one too many times. You have a devoted fanbase that are already drooling at the prospect of your next deck list. Why would you feel the need to throw a curveball like Yu-Gi-Oh! The Sacred Cards at them? For those who have decided to spend their money on more important things, Yu-Gi-Oh! is so close to being Pokemon, it's scary. In this case, you are a collector of cards instead of pocket monsters, but most of them are monsters all the same, creatures whose descriptions you might find in a Timothy Leary book. Your character looks like a shameless version of 3rd to 4th generation backwards hat wearing Pokemon trainer, and everyone else around you are citizens of Battle City, meaning everyone is just as into Yu-Gi-Oh as you are. In fact, Yu-Gi-Oh is so prevalent in this world that the multi-million dollar Kaiba Corporation is well established in the city, a company with intent on creating tournaments for Yu-Gi-Oh nuts. Seriously, why can't this be real life? Your mission in this game is to obtain six locator cards that will grant you entrance to the finals, but along with other duelists, a group of hooligans known as the Ghouls stand in your way of scoring rare cards that will considerably boost your deck strength. But a guy who rolls deep with Yugi Muto and Joey Wheeler can't be that bad, right? To be honest, I really like the environment of this game. Sometimes the GBA can use that 64-bit capacity to its fullest, and the level of detail of Battle City is a fine example of it. It's a shame, however, that the rules of the card game have changed, and certainly not for the better. The confusion is not necessarily in the structure of the game, but rather the layout of the battlefield, and right before the duel starts, where you must choose an anti-card that you will bet on the outcome of the duel. The rarer the card, the heftier the prize you receive at the end of the duel if you come out on top. Although the amount of cards you can use in your deck is plentiful and the chance for winning rare cards as well, you'll only be able to duel in-game, as in no multiplayer whatsoever. Which is rather disheartening since playing trading card games is a good way for nerds to get out of the house once in a while to meet with like-minded individuals. Now Konami might be playing a dirty trick on me since the duels I fought were either easy wins or exercises in futility which the battle against the robot inside Kaiba Corporation definitely was. Each time it got the first turn, it stomped me underfoot, and I played only one spell card, as compared to none by the robot. Weird. In conclusion, the Sacred Cards is a Yu-Gi-Oh game I definitely wouldn't train with, let alone take seriously. It's a decent but short adventure that doesn't fully capture what this great game should be presented as, a strategic battle that can go back and forth, with little to no foresight as to who should win, and the lack of multiplayer is certainly a red flag that should go up when you're picking up the next game to play. 